start today's review with a pretty big statement. The new generation KTM 390 Duke is the most exciting Indian motorcycle I have ridden this year. And that's a big statement because 2023 has been the biggest year when it comes to motorcycle launches, probably in the entire history of the industry. The bike is exciting for a number of reasons, not just the way it rides, but also the fact that this is the biggest update that the 390 has gotten since it came out in 2013. This time around, everything has changed. New chassis, new subframe, new engine and new look. Now the idea with the design here is that KTM is trying to emulate the looks of its bigger motorcycles, the 890 Duke to some extent and the 1290 Super Duke particularly. You can see that in these big tank extensions out here, the new composite aluminium subframe and the overall silhouette of the motorcycle. Now I think that this is a really good looking bike from many angles. It's got a sharp sense of aggression to it, it looks bigger than before and I really like the way the tail is executed. The one angle I'm not really so sure about is the front. I think it's a little too wide on the 390. Now the 390 gets a different panel to the new 250, which doesn't get this bottom extension out here. And I think that might actually look a little better. Right now, you've got a slim headlamp with these big extensions along the side. And these are actually functional DRLs, which is quite cool, but they don't look like the headlamp. On the 1290 Super Duke, this whole thing is the headlamp. So for me, the overall impression is that this bike feels like it's just gone to the gym, developed a few shoulder muscles, some pecs, and now it just walks around like this to show everyone its new muscles. I'm not really sold on that aspect of the design, but overall, I think this is a nice looking motorcycle. I also have to say that the attention to detail, the quality has improved. This is the best made, made in India KTM so far. There are small details, the new switch gear is unusual, it's nice to use, it looks good. The TFT display is brought a lot closer to the rider. In most circumstances, that's nice. There is one issue with that, which we'll get to in a bit. Now you must be wondering, these mirrors look familiar. They come off the Domina 400 and the international spec 390 Duke gets the mirrors that look like the 890 and the 1290. Those are really good looking mirrors, but Bajaj tells us that these mirrors are better suited to Indian conditions. Nevertheless, there's some nice details all around like this texture on the seat and the pillion seat. And speaking of the seat, this bright orange color looks really eye-catching. If you don't like it, you can go for the blue color bike, which gets a black seat. I also really like how KTM has managed the cables and hoses around the suspension fork. There's a little plastic bracket that holds it in place neatly. It's not as neatly and obsessively detailed as the new Triumph Speed 400, but it is quite good. Another thing you must have noticed visually is that new larger swing arm and that side mounted monoshock. Now this new suspension has had a lot of effect on what KTM could execute with the new 390 Duke. The first thing is that they managed a lower seat height. It's now 800 mm and when you sit on it, especially compared to the Gen 2 Duke, this feels like a much lower motorcycle. It's not too low, the riding position is typical KTM, your feet are further back, you have a very slight lean down to the bar, mostly upright, nice wide handlebar and your feet interface with the fuel tank nicely. I find this to be a comfortable position, but if you want a taller seat, KTM will sell you an accessory seat that you can purchase and bring the seat height up to 820 mm. Another effect of that new shock is that it's enabled KTM to give this bike a bigger airbox. That has helped the new engine produce even more power than before. This engine now makes 46 horsepower and 39 newton meters of torque. That makes it the most powerful single cylinder bike in the country and just one horsepower short of the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. The torque figure is also now the highest of all the single cylinder bikes, just beating the Harley X440. Now this really is a brand new engine, 399cc, lots of changes inside there and it sounds a little different as well. Unlike the Gen 2 KTM, it's gone back to being an underslung exhaust and here's what it sounds like. It's probably hard for you to tell, but this engine does sound a little different when you're on the move. I think the clearest difference to me is that there's more of a snarling intake sound. It sounds a little more hollow, a little deeper. It's hard to describe, but it's a nice sound. And I think it sounds better than the outgoing bike. 
So that's the new gen engine. But before we get to how this bike rides, let's also talk about the new chassis. The main frame is different. We said the subframe is different. The swing arm is different. And overall, the chassis itself has gotten a little heavier compared to the old bike. But the 390 Duke Gen 3 is lighter than the 390 Duke Gen 2 by 4 kilos. There are weight savings all over, the engine has saved some weight, there are no handguards anymore, small things all over. But the most relevant weight saving comes in the wheels. Like the RC, this has hub-mounted disc brakes. Collectively, both wheels save almost 2 kilos over the old bike and that will always have a good impact on the handling. So now that you know what's new, let's talk about how this bike rides. Now the thing with 390 Dukes is that their owners tend to do everything. They want to ride fast, they want to ride in the city, they want to go touring, they want to take it to Ladakh and they want to take it to the racetrack. So we'll try and address every one of those aspects. In terms of power delivery, this engine is very different to the Triumph Speed 400, where the Triumph's engine is all about low and mid-range performance. This thing still focuses its power on the top end. 6,000 RPM onwards, it comes alive and it pulls hard. It's a great feeling. You will cross 100 kph really quickly. Bajaj says 5.4 seconds. We'll test that for ourselves when we can. But the bike keeps pulling. 130 goes by like that. And if you crouch down like this, you'll see above 170 kph on the clocks. Flat out performance then continues to be a 390 Duke strong point. And while we haven't really tested it yet, from what I felt today, I think I'm confident enough to say that this and the RC390 remain the quickest motorcycles at the 3 lakh point. But what about when you want to slow down, take it easy, ride around in the city? KTMs have never been really good at that aspect. This motorcycle represents an improvement over its predecessor. It's not quite as lurchy at low RPMs. It doesn't mind being in maybe second gear at lower speeds. It's an improvement, but it's not like the Triumph. It's not like the Royal Enfield 650s. It still wants it to be above 2,500 RPM. That being said, tractability is quite decent. You can get over speed breakers in second gear without too much finessing of the clutch. It doesn't really lurch that much, but it's not completely smooth either. One element of life in the city that should be better on the Gen 3 Duke is heat management. This bike gets a new curved radiator with two radiator fans on either side. Now we haven't really gotten stuck in bad traffic today, but we've been riding for quite a while. It is fairly hot this afternoon and we haven't felt any hot air blast falling on our legs. It does seem to be nicely diverted away from the rider. Again, this is something we'll want to test properly, but for now, it does look quite good. So that's the city aspect taken care of, but what about highway touring? People like to take their 390s on long distances, and I think this bike represents an improvement in that regard as well. The riding position, like I said, is quite comfortable. The good news though is that you have a bigger fuel tank. It's now 15 litres. That is a significant improvement. It's about one and a half litres bigger than the Gen 2 bike, and I think you should comfortably get more than 300 kilometres on a tank full. As for general comfort, well, the seat is firm. That's a KTM hallmark. Not uncomfortable, but nice, flat and firm. Some people like this, some people don't. The new TFT display is positioned much closer to you and quite high up. And that actually does a pretty decent job of deflecting wind blast away from your chest. As for vibrations, yes, this is a KTM engine. There are some vibrations, but they're generally at the lower revs. When you cross the 5000 RPM mark, the engine smooths out quite nicely and at 110 kph 6 gear, it's really quite smooth. You can sustain that speed for a long time. If you want to ride with a pillion, there's a pretty decent amount of room at the back as well and these new grab handles are quite nice to use. Now, what about suspension comfort? Well, this bike finally gets adjustable suspension in India. You have compression and rebound damping adjustability in the front and preload and rebound damping at the rear. Now, all KTMs, even the big bikes with manually adjustable suspension do not come with preload adjustability in the front. I don't know why, but I'm not gonna complain because even this adjustability does make a good difference. Now, the thing with adjustable suspension is it's something we all love to see on a spec sheet, but it's also something you have to be a little careful with. If you don't know what you're doing and you just randomly twist all the knobs, you can really upset the motorcycle's balance down to the point of making it dangerous to ride. And in that respect, I think KTM has done a good job by just giving you five clicks of adjustability at each end. You can make a noticeable difference to the way the bike rides by playing around with the knobs, but you can't take it so far that it becomes dangerous to ride.
on its stock settings this suspension is really good i used to own a gen 1 390 duke and this is the kind of suspension i dreamed of there is a slight firmness to it but it also deals with bad roads undulations surprisingly well let's start with the bad road aspect people do like to take their 390 dukes out into the wilderness and if you want to ride this up to maybe ladakh you will find that the suspension is very capable of taking in a rough road You'll also be happy to know that there's now more ground clearance than the Gen 2 bike. But the bigger improvements are going to be noticed on the road. The ride quality is really quite nice, especially for a bike this sporty. It's not plush, but it stays connected to the road really well. It follows the undulations well, it stays planted. And one thing I really noticed as an improvement was that on the Gen 2 bike, you never really trusted the front end. It would always threaten to go into a tank slapper if you went through a bad patch at high speeds. This bike feels a lot more composed. And that's surprising because the wheelbase is now a little shorter and the front steering rake angle is a little sharper as well. The improvements, I think, are coming from that new suspension. For me, the most enjoyable aspect of this motorcycle is its handling. It still has that KTM sharpness and aggression and it really responds very quickly. But it also has a more grown-up sense to it, a little more stability, a little more plushness and that balance is very nice. Now, we were riding it on some narrow winding roads and the bike is great fun to throw around. But the really fun aspect of it is on the track. We started our day out on Bajaj's test track, never ridden the bike before, out onto the track, first two corners, knee down. That is the sign of a motorcycle that really fills you with confidence. Again, like we found on the road, it's stable, it's confidence inspiring, but it's also sharp and it makes you ride as hard as you can. The bike responds to your inputs very quickly, falls over to its side very quickly. The Metzeler M5 tyres that come as standard are good for the most part, but if you really start pushing on the track, these H-rated tyres do feel a little slippy on the limit. If this is a bike you want to take to the track, you might want to give it better tyres. But for road use, even fast road use, these are very good tyres. On the racetrack, the ergonomics are good for the most part. You have a nice sense of control from the handlebar. Your feet don't really hit anything. There's plenty of room to move around. You won't be grinding the foot pegs quite easily. In fact, I didn't grind the pegs at all today in our five laps that we had to try the bike out. The 390 also gets a new set of brakes and they work perfectly well for this level of performance. What's also nice is that there's a more stylish looking front master cylinder and the new adjustable levers are much nicer than before. The only one complaint is that this seat doesn't leave you much room on the track. On the road, you have enough space, but on the track, you want to slide back and get down. And as you can see, I literally have to sit on the pillion seat. Now, this is not just a problem that tall riders will face. Even average height riders were complaining of the same thing. It's also not helpful that this TFE display has come so close to you, which means that you need to move back. Again, this is a very small issue that will only apply at the racetrack and if you really want to, you can just take the pillion seat off, cover the area up with some duct tape and have a good time. That's what I used to do on my Gen 1 Duke. Now let's talk about features. The bike gets a new 5-inch TFT display, the layout is different and it now gets three riding modes and if you put it into track mode, you get a completely different view of the display. The Gen 3 390 Duke also gets traction control for the first time. It's something we've seen on the RC390, but it's now made its way here as well. Like the old motorcycle, it has a bi-directional quick shifter, but this one works a little better. It seems to be better incorporated in with the motorcycle. It still feels a little stuttery below 4000 RPM, but above that, it's smooth and reliable. And unlike the 390 Adventure, where we just rather turned it off, this is something we quite enjoyed using. And finally, this bike now gets launch control. It lets you hold the revs at one set RPM, release the clutch, get off the line as fast as you can. It's not something you'll use very often, but it is a fun feature to have. Some points to note, it only works when the coolant temperature is above 60 degrees and you only get to use it three times in a row before it tells you to take a break and let everything cool down. So there you have it, the new Gen 390 Duke. Great fun to ride, lots of improvements and it keeps that KTM hooligan attitude while bringing in a whole bunch of improvements. There is a lot to like here. But what about the price? Well, KTM has been steadily increasing the price of its motorcycles over the last few years. I remember 10 years ago, I bought my Gen 1 390 Duke for 2.1 lakh rupees on road. And this motorcycle costs 3.1 lakh rupees X showroom. 
that's a big jump. But to be fair, motorcycles across the board have gotten a lot more expensive and they're also giving you a whole lot more. In that respect, the 390 Duke actually commands quite decent value because it only costs 12,000 rupees more than the Gen 2 bike and it's a big improvement. If you're someone who loves riding fast, loves a sporty motorcycle with a hooligan streak and you have a sub 4 lakh rupee budget, I really don't think you can do much better than the Gen 3 390 Duke.